Hi there, I'm Laura, your English coach. Welcome one more day to our Lingoverse lessons. Today, I'd like to talk about politeness and respect, and more particularly, about how to be polite and show respect when having a conversation in English. Everybody likes to be respected, right? It doesn't matter if a person is your employee, a waiter, your best friend. In any case, we all like to be treated with politeness and respect. And therefore, it is essential that you are able to do this, to be polite and respectful when you speak in English. Because what can happen if we sound disrespectful when having a conversation in English? Well, what can happen is basically that first, you will make a bad impression and people won't like you at first. People may feel hurt if they have the feeling that they have not been treated correctly. And some people might even get a defensive attitude and answer you back in the same manner not being polite or respectful to you. Now, many times we don't want to be disrespectful or make anybody feel bad. It's not our intention at all. However, as English learners, sometimes we don't have the vocabulary or the fluency to be as polite and correct as we would like to. So what can we do then to project that sense of respect even if our level of English is not the best. What can we do? Well, for that, let's see three simple techniques today that will help you sound polite and respectful when having a conversation in English, regardless of how advanced or basic your level of English is. So let's get ready to start and check that you are already a part of our Lingovas family by subscribing to our channel Lingoves and activating the bell to be notified when there are new lessons for you. As well, practice your English with us on our social media, where we post daily content, mini lessons, pictures, activities to practice, and much, much more. And our first strategy to sound polite and respectful when having a conversation in English is don't give orders. Telling people what to do may be very disrespectful. Maybe you're not doing it on purpose, maybe you don't want to make anybody feel underestimated, but orders can have a very big impact on how people feel. Look at these three examples. Imagine that you are at a cafeteria and you tell the waiter, excuse me, bring me a cappuccino. Or that you're busy working and you cannot really assist the person and you tell them, um, come back later. Or that someone is speaking in English, they said something fast, you didn't get it, and you say, oh, repeat that? Hmm. These are all common everyday examples of one person telling another person what to do. But as you can see, these sentences are very imperative. And they sound rude and inappropriate. Now, what can we do? so that these sentences don't sound so rude and inappropriate. Well, here we have to pay attention to our choice of words. Giving a direct order is not polite and creates an aggressive tone. But how about asking questions? What if we turn these imperative ideas into questions? See how they sound. Excuse me, may I have a cappuccino? Sorry, would you mind coming back later? Huh? Could you repeat that, please? Your goal is exactly the same, that someone does something for you. But the way of communicating it in a conversation, and especially the way your listener will feel about it, is completely different. Phrases like, may I, would you mind, could you are great options to avoid using imperative language and giving orders. So remember, don't tell, better ask. Another technique to show respect when having a conversation in English is justification. Many times we must say no to an invitation, a suggestion, a request, 
and that's fine. But it's very important to justify why you're saying no. Look at these examples. Imagine that you invite me to your party, but I say, I'm sorry, I can't go to your party. Or you suggest an idea, but the answer to you is saying, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Or you ask me for a favor, but my response is, I'm afraid I won't be able to drive you to the airport. And nothing else. I'm sure you agree with me that these answers sound a bit impolite. Because if you don't justify why you are saying no, it feels as if you just don't want to. So if you say, I can't go to your party and nothing else, it feels as I don't want to go to your party. End of the story. Or mm, that's not a good idea. It feels as if I don't want to consider it. Or I won't be able to drive you to the airport. Feels as I don't want to drive you to the airport. And that feels right. However, if you justify your no, that changes the tone in the conversation completely. Listen. I'm sorry, I can't go to your party because I'll be away that weekend. I'm not sure that's a good idea because we don't have so much time. I'm afraid I won't be able to drive you to the airport because I'll be working at that time. This idea of no because changes it all. No, we don't have the feeling anymore of I don't want to do it, but the idea of Unfortunately, there is something that makes it impossible for me to do it. And this change in tone makes your listener feel more understanding of your needs, makes your listener feel more respected as a person and more appreciated. So remember, justify your nose. And our last strategy for you to be polite and correct in English conversation is separate opinions from facts. When we speak, we often express our personal opinion, but we do it as if it was a general fact and everybody in the world had to agree with us. And we say things like, mm, the restaurant is very expensive. No, she didn't do a good job. Seven, seven a.m. is too early. But the truth is that different people have different opinions. What might be expensive for you may not be expensive for another person. What might be a well done job for you may not be the well done for another person. We all have different opinions. So when sharing yours in a conversation, try not to impose them as if they were facts, because that will only make people perceive you as authoritative and arrogant and that will make them feel disrespected and uncomfortable. And to avoid this, you can just make it very clear that it is only a personal opinion. How can you do that? Well, you can say things like, in my view, the restaurant is very expensive. I feel that she didn't do a good job. In my opinion, 7 a.m. is too early. So using phrases like, in my opinion, in my view, as I see it, and verbs like, I think, I feel, I believe, what we are doing is to soften our ideas so that they sound less direct and therefore more polite and respectful. To sum up. It doesn't matter where you are, you could be ordering a cappuccino in a cafeteria or saying no to an invitation or even expressing a strong opinion. In any case, you must always keep your sense of respect so that you can have a polite and correct conversation with other people in English. If you found this video helpful, like it, share it with your friends and don't forget to check the amazing lessons we have prepared for you on our YouTube channel. I'll see you very soon in our next lesson. But till then, practice this, enjoy it and share it.